Hello everyone, from BX257 here again, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe tour reviewer. And look what just rolled into Canadian retail. Finally. Now, this actually um, is being sold right now in Target Canada for $44.99, which is not that much of a markup from what I believe the U.S. is set at $42.99, I, I think. I'm actually a little bit surprised that this was uh, released in Target Canada first before Toys R Us Canada, but maybe I shouldn't be so surprised because, well, take a look at the stuff that Toys R Us still has. This item actually came in um, a week ago, but I was waiting for something to show up to add to this review, and that is Ultimate Roadblock. And you'll see why I waited to pair these two up together. Fully assembled, the Eagle Hawk is a 21 inch helicopter with space for seven GI Joes. The rotor blades actually rotate quite freely. Very nice. But if the shelf space that this thing takes up is a little too much, you can actually fold the rotor blades back. Just like that. I know it takes up quite a bit less space. The uh, tail rotor actually rotates on a diagonal and the blades actually do spin in, in here although they're a bit hard to get. And it has permanently exposed landing gear which actually roll. Starting out the front, we have a little tab here which aids in opening up the canopy glass. On the inside of the cockpit, we have two seats, neither of which have a back peg, so you can use either modern or vintage figures in here, as well as a really nice sculpt on the dash. Also has some uh, uh, very flexible uh, joysticks as well here. On the bottom, we have a rotating and elevating machine gun with really nice detail, more so than the original had, as well as the uh, camera, which goes up and down along with the machine gun. On the side here, we have the three missiles and the bomb. We have that repeated on the other side. And the missiles on the bombs actually look very much like the originals. There's slight, uh, slight differences in the mold, however. Just looking at the missiles, this is the original one, which is very plain, versus the new one. And this is the new uh, bomb, which is kind of hollow in the inside, and this is the original which was hollow from this end. On the inside, we have the same five seats. Of course, it's kind of hard to see that fifth seat all the way back there. But again, we have no back pegs, so you can put vintage or modern figures in here. We do have some foot pegs all along here, which is, again, <laughs> very hard to see. But uh, there are foot pegs, which will should well at least should aid in putting in modern figures. On either side we have these anti-personnel machine guns 
which actually um, they swivel on not only the uh, arm but as well as the pintle as well as a matter of fact you can just pop that right off so again very nice detail on here more so than how the original looked as a matter of fact these have some proper handles which the original machine guns on the uh, tomahawk lacked on the rear we still have the opening personnel ramp which um, I have to say I don't I don't really like how this kind of flops down like that the original at least had more friction on the hinges to allow you to put it any way any which way you wanted however this does have foot pegs on here as well as more access to the pegs back here which I'll again get to a bit later and finally on the side we have the rescue hook winch of course you just open that up and we have a nice hook on the end here and it wouldn't be an updated tomahawk without an updated lift ticket unfortunately comparing the two lift tickets is kind of like comparing apples and oranges um, they don't look anything alike and I'm just going to get rid of this guy for now as a matter of fact I can't even uh, compare the bios because there was no file card even printed on the box what we get here is admittedly a very nice figure he comes with a removable helmet with some really nice detail on here the figure itself has a removable vest It's, it's actually kind of a plain figure overall, but it's very well articulated and well sculpted. So I can kind of forgive that a little punch of color on there right in the middle. He also comes with a, what looks like an AK-74U. I'm not quite sure why, uh, why he would come with a, a Russian uh, submachine gun, but well, there it is. I know a lot of the uh, Rise of Cobra figures, uh, driver figures especially, only had five points of articulation. And while, quite frankly, I didn't care about that being uh, not a modern collector, I know modern collectors really like uh, the fact that this is, in fact, a fully articulated figure. It moves quite frankly in almost every, any direction really has wrists that uh, not only rotate but they actually kind of um, bend up and down on both hands oh, that's a very neat little feature really aids in double wielding uh, very long rifles in fact as I ball I think up there on his uh, torso as well as uh, double hinged knees that's always very good and a swiveling toe well, ankle I should say which pivots one unfortunate thing about these types of figures uh, modern figures especially they really need a figure stand because this uh, this guy is really hard for me to stand of course uh, a not being a modern modern figure uh, collector I don't have a lot of these stands this is like the only stand I have free and even then I still have to put a bit of blue tack on there still this is a really cool figure and of course he fits in there really nice and very easily the Eagle Hawk comes with a pair of spare headphones so now you can turn whatever figures you want into Eagle Hawk Cruise. Here I'm just going to uh, grab this borrowed figure which is a Rise of Cobra uh, repeater I believe and 
the headphones fit on him rather nicely. As a matter of fact, it almost matches the vest that he comes with, which is kind of why I chose him. So finally we get to why I decided to purchase Ultimate Roadblock in order to specifically go with the Eagle Hawk. And that's because he has two accessories which are actually compatible with the Eagle Hawk. First, we have his trademark machine gun, which as you, you'll notice, has a pintle. So remember when we removed the original machine gun from there? Well, it totally fits on here. And doesn't that look cool? And then there's Roadblock's two-piece backpack, which I'll just connect right now. And as a backpack, it's uh, kind of big, bulky, and rather goofy looking. However, its secondary purpose is to be attached to the back of the Eagle Hawk. The Eagle Hawk has these backpack sized uh, peg holes on one on either side of the uh, rear section. And you can totally just pop them right in there. Obviously this will fit other backpacks, but as this had sort of a uh, rappelling feature, which makes sense for the uh, Rise of Cobra movie, as this is something that they totally did, it looks perfectly fine there. Run! Go! Get to the chopper! And last but not least, if you have a figure with a backpack and you want to have some storage, there are actually some four raised holes here. So you can totally put even a uh, medium-sized backpack on there and it'll fit just fine. Special thanks are in order for John Warden of Hasbro for making the reissue of the Tomahawk possible in the first place. He was also responsible for taking out some details in order to lower the retail price and adding in some really nice detail that the original lacked. So, with apologies to Pixel Dan, it's comparison time. There are a number of minor and major changes between the Eagle Hawk and the original Tomahawk. The first one being is that the Eagle Hawk is a very dark tint to its canopy glass. As a matter of fact, you can almost not see through it. Whereas the original, it's a very light tint. The original also had these glass windows on the bottom near the feet. Whereas these are just painted on. It's a solid piece. Another difference is the opening engine covers. On the new version, we have a hinged cover, which stays on. I mean, obviously you can pull it off without damaging it, but it's actually hinged. And there's engine detail, which is almost exactly like the, the original, but it does have some sculpting differences. On the new version, we have five opening engine covers. These ones aren't hinged at all, and, well, you can very easily lose all of these pieces. Remember how I said the tail roller on the new version was kind of hard to get at, even though it clearly spun? Well, on the original, we do have a knob on the other side here. So you can't access that. On the bottom, we have this uh, rescue hook with the knob on the, uh, on the very bottom here, which is very shallow. It's very nice that you don't see it, but it's also kind of hard to get at, especially when holding such a heavy toy. On the new version, which is again, admittedly a bit lighter, the knob is on the side and very easy to access. And finally, on the original, we had 
all five of these seats in the passenger compartment were removable. So you can turn a personnel transport into a cargo transport by taking out all of the seats. The seats on the Eagle Hawk, however, are molded in. Now let's take a look at what's compatible between the two helicopters. Check it out. The bombs and the missiles are totally compatible with each other. These are the new items right on the old platforms. And these are the old on the new platform. Here I've tried to exchange the canopy glass and it almost works. The old one almost fits on the Eagle Hawk, but there's kind of a terrible gap here. As this, uh, I believe the actual um, hinge here is actually kind of long, like upwards. And there's no way the, the new one fits on here. It just doesn't go deep enough. The uh, clip is just too wide. Interestingly enough, you can take the new motor blades and totally put them on the, the old Tomahawk. But likewise, the old Tomahawk rotor blades, they don't really fit very well in here, being too thick at the connection point. And now for the $45 question, is it worth it? In my opinion, absolutely. This is a nine out of 10 on the scale of plastic quality over what you would find in the other uh, comparable military helicopter toys out there. On top of that, the details are superb. It looks exactly like the 1986 Tomahawk, but it's not outdated either. This is definitely something that you'd give to your kids. And that's kind of the whole point, isn't it? Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.